And I want to do a little bit of FGC talk because I came across some stuff this morning, man, that it, it, it got it got it got me thinking. This this something something got me thinking. And uh, I'm gonna start off by saying the one of the things I hate the most about discussing things in public like this is that oftentimes you have to go kind of like through someone else in order to talk about a point that you wanna make. It's cool. I'm talking I wanna talk about something that like springs forth from this conversation. And it's a conversation that got started by Go Lower. So they are a artist, YouTuber, writer, um, maker of video things. And they recently put together, they recently put together a video uh, alongside TZ Toast Rider about um, Sam Show 6. They, they made this video and they said that they, hey man, we're getting complaints of, so it's a Discord fighter in the Sam Show 6 video comments, which frankly, something totally to be expected, right? This is going to happen, right? But there's something, uh, but there's multiple monthly tournaments for the game. Is that not enough of a community for a game that hasn't uh, had a scene until very recently? And uh, goes on to say, um, you're telling on yourself uh, being an idiot for expectation that every fighting game is only worth playing if you can only get on at any time, instantly find matches, zip, zam, boom, right? Not every retro is third strike. Don't use that as a gotcha. And this, 100%, like that last bit there, we got to talk about like expectations, but this like this wider discussion here of like the Discord fighter, right? And Discord fighter being used as a pejorative. Um, I totally get that. There is this like almost invariably when you talk about a niche fighting game, someone is gonna come into your comment section and your mentions and be like, "Yeah, dead game. No one plays that Discord fighter. Who cares?" That dismissiveness really sucks man especially when you see folks doing something really cool for a community trying to like represent a community host tournaments create a space for people who want to play that game and then to have someone come in and be hyper dismissive really sucks but this got a couple comments going not saying that fighting game only holds value if they're super popular titles or games that have crazy amounts of player but you have to reflect on how crazy you sound by telling people you should play games that don't offer more opportunities for them to actually play but if I had to go play the game on a bi-weekly schedule or plan an exact time and date for a first to five, I'd probably stop caring to improve altogether. And that is something that I literally told my wife a week ago, right? That I really enjoy playing games the way that I play them now. Trying to discover things, doing the lab thing, building community around them. I don't play games competitively in the way that I used to. I got, I, I kind of miss that. But at the same time, if I have to chase my one opportunity a month and I have to set that time aside and I have to go to the Discord and I have to get the, you know, the attention of another player and, and set up time. And like, there's a lot of things going on there. That means like, if I can't, if I'm not able to engage with the game and learn it competitively on a in, in a fashion that works for me, then it's not worth my time, right? I'm not going to play the game in that way, which is absolutely fair. I mean, and Blast, you're absolutely right. Like, a lot of the times when you end up taking these games seriously anyways, they're ended up treating like Discord fighters because you don't want that. The better experience for you is going to be going to this, right? Right. So yeah, yeah. Here and and so so Goloa responds with this, and and this is this is a sentiment that and and once again, like I, I totally I totally respect Goloa and their and their take on this. In so far as like, like this is this is a frustrated response with with seeing a kind of dismissive take, and I get that, and and I feel I feel the core of this, but there are some things going on here which like I think this this conversation should highlight. It's a cash 22 games doesn't have a lot of players therefore people shouldn't play it and if everyone followed that logic the games aren't there are only like 15 in the world that matter and that are worth playing it's not about like no one should play it it's about if i have to do these things i'd probably stop caring to improve which makes total sense and like i've seen this response all the time right like and and, and you'll see it actually a little further down in the conversation if you only let your play, uh, you let yourself play fighting games that aren't Discord fighters, you're going to be limited to like five games in any given year. God forbid you have to talk to someone to set up a match. I'm going to be real. Yes. Like, sometimes I don't want to have to fucking go through the social anxiety and the social um, hurdles just to play a match, right? Like, this, and, and, and 
the bigger thing here is that what are our communities and who are our communities set up to, to accommodate, right? And if you don't have any social anxiety, if you aren't an introvert, and if you're able to, to, to like schedule specific times to meet with specific people, then it's not actually that much of an ask to do this, right? But if all of a sudden I'm like, I don't have that time, like, right? My schedule means that in the 20 minutes that I have between when I get off work, when I finish my contract work, when I make dinner, and when I hang out with my wife and spend time with her, right? Like, when my 15 minutes pops up is going to be different every any given time, right? And that's before you even get into the, there's the social pressure of, if I'm setting up a time to play with someone specifically through Discord, there is an expectation that we both get enough out of that. And the number of times that I have hooked up with someone on Discord to play some matches, we play a first to 10, and I'm like, thanks for the games, man. And they're like, you're done already, right? And it's like, I'm left feeling guilty because I feel like I've wasted their time because they didn't get enough out of it, right? We can't dismiss the kinds of players and the kinds of people, the kinds of human beings in our community and the way that they fucking work, right? Like, there are some legitimate social pressures that impact people who are either introverts, who have whatever social anxiety issues. Even if you don't, there are still things that are like, like I said, man, is it reasonable to ask everyone to hop into yet another Discord so that they can learn that Discord's rules, learn the community's vibe, meet people in that community, know who you want to meet up with, be able to set up a play date with them, and then dedicate that time to it? Like, that is not as simple as, heaven forbid, you should have to socialize, right? Yes, socializing is a very core part of fighting games. I'm not trying to discount that. And I do think more people should be willing to contact others and say, hey, let's make a fucking play date. Play dates are cool. I make play dates with my friends. Dude, me, Punk, and Mohast did a Mortal Kombat 1 play date. That was super fun, right? And it happened to work that we were able to coordinate that time. But like, being like, that's how you play. Why do you, why should you expect? And if we get back here to that original comment, right? which was, you should play games that don't offer more opportunities to play them actually, right? So how are our communities set up to serve people? How do they serve them and who do they serve, right? Those are big freaking questions, right? What is it that we can do better in order to accommodate a wider array of people, right? And, and I, will, I, will be, I will be the first to suggest community lobby nights. And more than lobbies, not even lobbies, community queues. If the problem here is there's a there's a social expectation that is a hurdle for people and they're not able to, to, to clear that hurdle in order to go and engage with a Discord fighter, what do they do? Their answer is obviously what a lot of people say is queues. I should be able to hop online in a populated online game and get matches with people without having to go through those social, jump through those social hoops. Community-driven events, yes, uh, on, uh, Andrew, absolutely, good call. The Tetris Effect have those weekly, huge, huge weekly themed events which everyone can contribute to something like game-wide in a certain way. That is an amazing way for individuals to be able to be encouraged to engage in community. If you enjoy those activities solo, you will enjoy them more engaging with other people, right? If you enjoy this fighting game solo, you will enjoy it more with other people, right? So like community lobby nights are something that Sure, I might not be able to say, hey man, I can set up at six o'clock, but somewhere between five and nine, I'm gonna have 15 or 20 minutes where I can hop into a queue and play some matches with people. If I know that the Murphite community is out on a Thursday night and I have this three hour window where I can spend 10 or 20 minutes, that's amazing. And I can do that. And that gives access to a type of player and a type of, once again, person, a type of human being to be able to interact with us and play these games and make our communities better. Whereas saying it's a Discord fighter, just meet people in the community and then make friends and then fucking play games with them. Like, that's obviously not cutting it for those people. Community events, community lobbies, man, that 15 minutes, right? Because it's different. It's different saying, I'm going to sit down with you at six o'clock, 
right? If I show up at 6.15, that's a problem. If the community night happens from 7 to 9 p.m. and I show up at 7.45 and I leave at fucking 8.30, that's fine. I'm not hurting anyone. But if someone's sitting down with me to play matches and they expect to play for an hour or two and I try to leave after 15 or 20 minutes because I got some other stuff, I got to take out the laundry and then I got to walk the dog... I mean, like, that's, it's, it's not, it's not a solution for everyone. So I don't think it's, I think it's more important that when these things come up, we shouldn't be as dismissive as we sometimes are with our knee-jerk frustrated reactions, right? Which, once again, in fairness to, like, Toast and Go here, I feel them very much on, on that kind of knee-jerk reaction of, dude, we're doing a good thing, why is this bad in your mind, right? Like, I, I totally get that, but it's like, it's, they're not saying it's bad. They're saying that as amazing as it is, it's not actually serving me, and that's it, and that sucks, right? And so, if we're serious about community, if we're serious about that, which I would like to think I am, I would like to think all of us here are, then we should probably think about how to improve on that going forward. So I'd love to hear your your folks' thoughts on this about like what yeah, what do you think that you could do? in order to improve on this and allow access to people who are like, man, that Discord fighter hurdle is is too much for me, right? And, and let me be clear, I'm not using Discord fighter in a pejorative term, right? And there's a reason that I don't use terms like Discord fighter, I don't use terms like Kusoge, and I don't use terms like poverty fighter, right? Because they're not actually representative of it. So when someone says, oh, Discord fighter, I get why people react poorly, right? Just the same way that when someone says poverty fighter, I react poorly. I mean, not the least of which is, why do we need to bring class and uh, monetary class into this? But like, no, it's not, it's not that we're playing these games because we can't afford to play the good games. It's that we're playing these games because they're good and they're interesting in their own right. Discord fighter isn't a bad thing. I don't even want to fucking use that term, man. Like, once again, the biggest games are also Discord fighters because that's where you go to get specific training with specific people when you're engaged in that way. Yeah, and Kalexo, you're absolutely right. The, the and this is, it's, I almost didn't respond to any of this today because I was like, you're right, this is a much more nuanced thing. And like I said at the beginning, I hate having to go through other people to make a point. I'm not, I'm not saying that Go is like, right, unreasonable or that Toast is being unreasonable here. Um, I saw I saw what was happening here, and I saw a miscommunication between a couple people, and I was like, that speaks to a much larger issue, and we should be talking about this. So I just like, I, de I want to depersonalize a little bit of that right now, right? Yes, Andrew, a run in the background friendly design should be standard. There, this is, you're right, there are things you can do. There are community things that we can do to improve on this, and then there's developer-led things that can be done to improve on this as well. Ah, yes, PJAs. You should look, you make it clear what you're looking for specifically in a play session. Absolutely. Uh, once again, this kind of, every, everything here kind of stemmed from a miscommunication. And I think you're right. Some of that social anxiety for me is that I feel bad putting limits on someone. I don't want to be like, yo, dude, I, I can make it in 30 minutes for 15 and then I'm out. Right? And then, right, like, putting that on them, like, is it worth it for them to do that? No, so maybe I'll just do it, and then maybe I'll be able to push it to 30 minutes, and then maybe they won't feel so, right? And it's like, but you're right, being clearer about those things would eliminate a lot of that. Yeah, and Kalexo, ho, oh, that's a very good point. Yeah, uh, fighting games are such a peculiar niche. If your game doesn't have skill-based matchmaking, you have to do your best to find the right places to play at your own level. And that is very difficult, right? And I will say, so this, this community lobby idea actually came from the Fantasy Strike community. Where one of the amazing things, things that Fantasy Strike did is that you can you could just add people to a friends list and then it's a one button um, challenge matchmaking. But it's also one button spectating. So if they're playing in ranked mode, you can just click on someone and spectate. So it made community lobby nights really interesting, where a streamer could go have a shit ton of friends on their list, and everyone hops in the queue. And whether you're playing ranked and whether you're playing, you know, casuals, you'd just be able to go, I'd be like, hey, I have 90 people. I can just go right click, boom, uh, that punk is playing. Right click, boom, hypergrav is playing, right? And uh, and see who they're playing against. And you get this excellent mis like mix of matches. And uh, it allows people to play casual queues where rank doesn't matter or rank-based skill matchmaking where you can kind of find people at those levels. Um, but, 
but yeah, I think the strength of it, you're right. You're not going to be able to find people, like if you're looking for beginners, you're not going to solely be able to find beginners if there's no skill-based matchmaking. But uh, hopefully if you get a broad enough representation of people engaging in these community events, then you will get the, the uh, an appropriate mix. You'd be able to see the the spectrum. And like I said, being involved in that way makes it much easier, right? I don't I don't have to go and start that. Someone else might see me and message me. So I might I might appear on a stream, right? Which in fairness also has its own share of like social anxiety and social hurdles there. It is something that can be a gateway for people from playing solo uh, online to being actually involved and engaged in the community. Griffey saying, it's an interesting question. They think people like us can only really help people get over the Discord fighter hurdle if someone is willing and dedicated enough to trying out a niche game. But if someone expects to be able to match make quickly 24-7 in an obscure fighting game with a small player base, I just don't think it's possible to help someone get into that mindset to get into niche fighters. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And once again, I think the core of the miscommunication in this, like, this thing that happened this morning was, was that. Is like, I, I don't think people are saying that they expect it, but they are saying that when that's not there, it is extremely challenging, right? And perhaps you're right that that just does mean that those people will never really be able to engage. I think that's, I, I think we can do better than that personally, um, right? I think there are ways that we can, we can help onboard them and make it so that that kind of, that kind of lack of immediate access is less of a problem. Yeah, Kalexo, one of your testers uh, streams Battle Craze every Saturday, and they try their best to get two people with similar skill level to duke it out in the first to 15. Not perfect, but encourages new players to participate. Yeah, right? And pairing that with, like, an open lobby, right? Where you're you're able to say, look, man, I'm just going to fucking whatever. I have a... I'm just going to stream, right? And then if you're able... Spectating is a key to this, unfortunately, Right? Uh, but if you had some kind of spectator functionality, being able to spectate other people playing matches casually, just randomly, and then doing that first to 15, it's an excuse for people to come in, have low stakes uh, engagement with the community, and then uh, maybe say, hey, I could do a first to 15 with someone. And that gets them. And then, oh, maybe I will want to join that tournament next time, right? It's like th those are the steps that you need to take to onboard people. Once again, the core of the frustration from Go really did seem to be that it was the dismissiveness of, look, we are providing space. So that the space isn't perfect shouldn't be a reason to discount it. But it's like, but also it's like, yeah, no, that space is great, but it's not like serving my needs, right? Yeah, people have to, Griffey continuing, people have to temper their expectations correctly to the size of the game. In the modern age, you can play almost any game online, but you probably won't be able to play people all the time to get a large tourney entrance at first, unless things build to there over time. That is the other side of it, yes, is that there... And 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 one of the first things, right, that, that Go said is that you can't expect every retro game to be third strike levels of popularity. And that's true. We need to temper our expectations. And, and feeding into, like, the names we give these things, Niche Fighter... There's a reason I use niche fighter in lieu of other terms, because it is very descriptive of all of those issues, right? It might be, niche might mean that there's not that much information about it. Niche might mean that there's no competitive scene for it. Niche might mean that it's not easy to get casuals in it, right? Like, it can mean all those things, and it implies a lot about what you have to do to engage with that game, that poverty, kusoge, and discord fighter don't necessarily. This discussion about Discord fighters comes up fairly regularly. It's part of the the cycle of FGC discourse. Uh, and, and and I just, when I saw it this morning, like I said, I, I, it really struck me that there is a, a larger thing at play where, while yes, people being a little bit more willing to engage with community would make these things much bigger, much more popular, much more sustainable, it's also not good enough to just say, suck it up, you have to do it this way, because a lot of people will just say, fine, then I won't do it. We can't really be surprised that there's no one there when you said, that's the way it's got to be, and you didn't. we didn't try to work towards a better solution. So I'm hopeful that maybe we can move towards a bit of a better solution. I'm really curious to see what other, uh, what other folks in the fighting game community think we can do to make better spaces for people who find it hard to get over those social hurdles.